Hey everybody, it's me, Mara Winterhide from Mara Winterhide's Online Adventures here in YouTube. I am going to be doing a tutorial for you guys today in 3DX chat. Why? Because I want to. <laughs> so, I'm going to be I'm going to be showing you a couple of things. I'm going to be basically going over the entire uh this is for the you know, basics, uh, all the icons at the top of the screen and what they do. Um, now, don't panic. You don't have to sit here and watch the whole video. If there's a couple of things that you already know how to use and you just want to skip to the one that you want to learn about, I'm going to add a chapter to my video so that you can just go into the description and click on the timestamp that you want to get to in order to learn about that, you know, that tool specifically. So as you can see, I'm standing in the default room. This is the default room that you get when you join the game. Ta-da! See? It's a decent room. I mean, I can't complain. I like it. Yep. I like it. So, for all of you new users, first thing you're going to do is this. In the bottom left-hand corner, you've got... Oh, I'm walking off. <laughs> In the bottom left-hand corner, you've got this, like green bar it says select select location you're going to click on that okay now this is where you would normally go to click on a room that you want to go to but instead of doing that we're going to click on this button right here that says customize you're going to customize your room or go into build mode that's what this is you can tell you're in build mode because you'll be able to see like the wall poses and any other poses that you have in here if you have any lights like actual physical lights in the room and not just glowing blocks, but actual physical lights or fire, you'll be able to see the actual outline of the actual fire in here, like the block that you used for it. So now I am going to load my personal default building rooms. This is where I go to build furniture and uh, like, you know, my DJ logo and stuff like that. I have several of them, but I'm gonna use one that I only have a couple of items in just so I don't confuse you guys, okay? So in the upper left-hand corner, if you, to load a room, you're going to click on File, okay? And then you're going to click on Load from File right here, okay? And then you're like, are you sure? You will lose your current layout and you cannot undo this action. If you are currently working on a build and you have not saved it, stop. Please save your file before you do this. I can't count how many times I've done this and lost, I don't know, usually about 15, maybe half an hour worth of building. The odd time I will forget to save every 15 minutes, but uh, it is what it is, right? So then you're going to click on OK. Now, I'm going to make a suggestion. Don't save your builds in the same file as where your 3DX is installed. Because if you ever have to uninstall the game because you're having issues with it and reinstall it, you're going to lose everything. All of your outfits, all of everything. Okay, so in my documents, this is where my game is installed. I created this completely separate folder for it. This is where all my 3DX shit is. So you're going to go into your building folder. Okay, and if you scroll down, I'm going to see, well, if I scroll down, I'm going to see my generic building rooms. So click on that. And welcome to my generic building room. Ta-da! Okay, so here's a really cool thing about build mode. I'm trying to get it to change because I've been here just over two and a half years. Pressing F6 on your keyboard, watch. Pressing F6 on your keyboard will go into live mode, like avatar walking around mode, and you can actually run around. You cannot walk, you can run. Now, okay, that would be fantastic if we could walk. It would also be great if you could use the poses, but in build mode, you can't. Pressing F5 will bring you back into build mode. All right, next, settings. We're gonna go over settings. This is extremely important. In the upper right-hand corner, you're gonna go and you're gonna click on this little guy right here, settings. It's gonna bring you to the settings window. This is what you're gonna use for build mode, okay? Everything's set to default. I changed it back to default because Finally, thank you, Gizmo, your godsend when it came to this. They set it up now so that whatever you change in here, 
when you go out of build mode into live mode, start fiddling around, go back into build mode, whatever settings you changed in here are going to stay that way. When I first started the game two and a half some odd years ago, if whenever I changed my settings and left build mode and went back into build mode, they were always defaulting to like the default. They were always going back in the default settings. And it was so frustrating because sometimes I couldn't remember what the settings were. Don't worry about that. Whatever you change it to here, it's always going to be what you left it at. So the default ocean level is always set to zero meters. Okay. You can see that. Pretty self-explanatory. There's the ocean. You're good. Okay. Now you can raise it up a little bit for whatever reason in, in this room. I can't get any higher than that. So I just leave it at zero. Okay. Now, snap step. These two, I'm going to go over in the video much later on. In, my, in fact, I may do this video in chunks, like do one chunk of the video, then upload it. Do another chunk of the video, then upload it, et cetera, et cetera. So snap step is this guy here. I'm not going to turn it on. I'll go over it later. It's... When you activate this and you go to move either a block or a grouped, a set of grouped blocks, like an item, it snaps to like every meter. Instead of sliding across the floor, it'll jump a meter because the default is set to a meter. If you want to set it to 0.5 meters, you can set it to 0.5 meters. If you want to set it to 2 meters, 5 meters, 10 meters, whatever your heart's desire, set it to that. Snap angle, same thing. The default is 15. I don't change this. I leave it at 15 and here's why. When I turn this on up here, okay, the snap angle, when I'm turning an item, it'll snap to 15 degrees. So it'll turn every time I move it, 15 degrees. So if I wanna move something 45 degrees, I just turn it three times. If I wanna turn something 90 degrees, I turn it six times. Very simple, right? You can change this to 90, but or even 45. But if you need, if you find that you're building and you want to move something just 15 degrees, go back into the settings and change it back to 15. I personally didn't, I didn't change this. I did once and I forgot and I left it and I was like, whoops. I went to turn something and it moved 90 degrees and I was like, oh, I got to undo that. <laughs> grid transparency. The grid transparency is talking about this here. So this is the global grid. You cannot change the direction of this. It is always going to be facing this direction no matter what. Okay? You can make it super, like, solid to see or you can, like, fade it out. Okay? Um, I usually leave it to the default. That's pretty... I, I mean, that's fine for me. I haven't changed... I don't really change it too much. That's fine. Grid spacing? Uh, I almost never change this. This is a meter. Grid spacing is how many, like how the spacing between with these blocks. So if you take a look here, the entire world map, as we call it, is divided up into this giant grid. So one of these little blocks here is actually one meter by one meter. Okay. So one meter by one meter. And then there's 10 of them across and 10 of them up. So each one of these big blocks here is a hundred cubic meters. Okay, you can change that to 0.5 or even 5 meters. But I mean, watch what happens when you change it to 5 meters. One of these blocks now is 5 by 5. <laughs> it's a little big. I usually leave it at 1. Sometimes if I'm, if I'm trying to move something perfectly but to a smaller space, I might bring it down to 0 0.5 meters, which makes the blocks even smaller. And at w there was one build I was working on that I changed it to zero, a quarter of a meter. But again, that's for more detailed work. We'll leave it at one for the tutorial, okay? Grid Y positioning. Now this is kind of important because like as you get more advanced into building, you might wanna raise where the grid is because when I was building, for example, Sunset City, I needed to raise the grid up so that I could place the lines on the floor in my Sunset City perfectly apart. Okay? Watch what happens to the to this here and watch the floor as I raise the grid positioning, okay? Now the position Y, that's the axis. If you're if you're talking about like what's the axis? The axis is the X, Y, and Z positioning. And I'll explain that a little bit later. So the Y axis is up and down. 
Okay, so that's up and down. So if I'm gonna change this to five meters, see how it's above now? You've basically risen. You raised it above the sea level. See what I mean? So we're gonna bring that down to one. And that brings it super close to like the floor. So now as I'm building, I can look at this and position, see how my spawn point, it's crooked. Do you see that? Now, what you can do is, say you don't want your spawn point crooked. You're really meticulous like I am. At least I'm becoming more meticulous. You can actually select your spawn point and, and turn it so that it's at the perfect position. Okay? We're going to bring that back down to zero. Uh, you know what? Let's bring it up to 0 0.5. 0 0.5 meters is just a half a meter above sea level. But now it's close enough to the floor that we can actually see where we're going to be positioning our stuff. Okay? Gizmo scale. This is super important. One of the biggest things that I found super irritating about building was how small the gizmo scale was. And you're like, what the hell is a gizmo? A gizmo, I know I'm not talking about the creator of 3DX, is this little teeny tiny thing in the middle of your block. So I just clicked on the spawn point to kind of show you guys how to work this. So now I have the spawn point selected, okay? But the gizmo scale is so tiny. I couldn't, I, the biggest problem I had was I kept misclicking. So instead of clicking it to move it, okay, I would end up misclicking it and be like, oops, I just selected everything in the freaking room. Don't want to do that. <laughs> so this changes the size of it. The gizmo scale, say you want to change it to number two. Watch what happens. See, now it's bigger. Watch what happens to it again. So the default is one. So that's the size of it when you first start. You can go to size two. But the guy that taught me how to do it is a really good friend of mine, St. Vitus. He said, try on number three. So I tried it on number three. This is for me, the perfect size for the gizmo scale. You guys can change it to four. You can change it to five. Five's really big. But as you pan out, it might be too big on your screen. Do you see what I mean? So I leave it at three, okay? Because as I'm panning out, See what I mean? Now I leave it at three. Sometimes I bring it down to two. Now, just a side note, I do use a laptop. I'm using an Acer Nitro 5. Um, it's got six, 16 gigs of RAM and it's got an RTX 3060 video card. So it's a pretty decent, you know, for all of this that I'm doing. But I currently have a 24 inch monitor connected to it as an external monitor, just so I can see things better. Normally, believe it or not, I'm actually doing building and playing the game on a 40 inch TV as my external monitor. Why? I don't know, because I can. Actually, the reason I wasn't using a 40 inch monitor, uh, TV as my monitor is because my old laptop, I only got this laptop in March, had a shattered screen, so I needed an external monitor. Let me tell you, when I got my new monitor in March, downgrading from a 40 inch TV to a 15 inch laptop monitor was a bit of a shock. So I have a 24 inch monitor to kind of help out with it, but I still usually use my 40 inch TV because being in build mode on such a big monitor really helps see what's going on and kind of helps me in getting finer details done. So using the gizmo scale, I suggest leaving it at three, but again, you can adjust it to whatever you want. So for the tutorial, I'm gonna leave it on three. Now, the buttons at the top. You're like, what do all these things do? All right, so these things do multiple different things. So this is pretty self-explanatory. Undo, redo, copy, and delete, okay? So first one, we're gonna place a block. I placed a block. Ah, shit, I didn't wanna do that. All you have to do, click the undo button. Say you're like, oh, I actually want to redo that. Okay, click the redo button. So again, undo is this arrow here, this arrow right here, the one pointing to the left. Okay, redo is this arrow right here. So undo and redo. Undo on the keyboard shortcut is control Z. Again, undo on the keyboard shortcut is control Z. Redo is control Y. Again, redo on the keyboard shortcut is control Y. Ta-da, there's undo and redo. Now, copy. 
click on the block that you want to, or the item, the group, whatever you want to copy. Okay. Make sure it's selected. You'll know it's selected because you'll see the gizmo. Okay. Now, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click on the copy button. Boop. Just like that. Now, control C on the keyboard normally is copy, but it doesn't work in game. I have yet to experience that on both my old and my new laptop. It does not work, so I'm going to presume that there isn't a keyboard shortcut for it. If there is, I don't know what it is. So all you have to do now is click on one of these three triangles, like pointers here, and move your block. Now you've copied it. Simple as that. I'm going to go over that again. Select a block that you have and you want to copy or the grouped items. Select copy and move it. Now you have a copy. Now, delete. <laughs> this is pretty self-explanatory. Select the item or block you want to delete and click on delete. Or the keyboard shortcut, click on the delete button on your keyboard. Pretty simple. Again, select the item that you want to delete, click on delete, and you're done. Or the keyboard shortcut, delete. Ta-da! That is your tutorial today for undo, redo, copy, and delete. All right, that concludes this tutorial for you guys today. I'm gonna upload another one. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to ask them in the comments section below. I'm also gonna leave a link to the screen recording software I am using this. It is called Debut by NCH Software. It is amazing, uh, it's pretty easy to use. Uh, I'm pretty tech savvy, but I was able to figure out the settings myself without any major assistance. So just go ahead and ask any questions you want to ask, and I will get to them as soon as I can. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I will see you guys later in-game.